Drinking is such a rite of passage. It's a social lubricant and a direct contributor to some of the best stories of my life. So why am I about to talk bad about it? Hmm. Listen, booze is a $1.5 trillion global industry. Clearly it has some redeeming qualities. But is it getting in the way of the new you? Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how to build a diet that supports your social life. Hi, my name is Justin Canning and I spent my entire young life as overweight and obese. And I spent the last 15 years learning to be the new best version of myself every day and helping other people do so as well. Today I'm going to talk to you about how alcohol affects your diet, the way your body metabolizes alcohol, how it affects your sleep, and ways we can build our diets to support our social life, be able to go out on a Friday night and still be able to achieve our fitness goals as well. So we've all heard that alcohol has empty calories, but what does that mean? You see, all the foods we eat are broken down into three macronutrients, carbs, proteins, and fats. Where carbs and proteins are four calories per gram, fats are nine calories per gram. Alcohol is the only other thing out there that doesn't fall into these categories. Alcohol is made up of seven calories per gram. Because our body has no storage capabilities for alcohol like it does for the other macronutrients, our body has to figure out a way to get it out of our system. And in doing so, it breaks alcohol down further into a thing called acetate. And you see, acetate is very harmful to the body. So the body prioritizes removing the acetate from the system. This means that your body is prioritizing removing alcohol in the system before it does anything with the other foods you've been eating. So not only is your body taking in calories it can't use from alcohol, it's doing so before it can actually use the good calories you're taking in from other foods. The average American drinks about 10 alcoholic drinks per week. So let's do the math on that. Just a regular beer has about 150 calories with about 10 grams of carbs. A glass of red wine is about 150 calories with four carbs per serving. And none of you guys out there are pouring one serving of wine. If my sister's listening, a bottle of wine is about 625 calories with 20 grams of carbs. For spirits like vodka and gin, they're about 90 calories with no carbs. So if you're mixing that with a seltzer or a water, that's a more optimal option. So taking the average here, using 150 calories per drink as an average, say your diet plan is about 2,400 calories per day. A weekly average is 16,800 calories. So 1,500 calories is roughly 10% of your diet. So say you're having a house built and you find out that 10% of the materials being used are just empty, no real building blocks at all. You wouldn't be very happy. And this is the situation you're putting yourself when you're taking in empty calories like alcohol. The better you're able to help your diet reflect these empty calories and excess carbs, the better you are setting yourself up for success going on nights out. One of the biggest component of a healthy lifestyle is adequate sleep. I heard a quote once, someone saying, if good hydration and a good night's sleep came in pill form, it would be a billion dollar industry. But where it's so simple, people often overlook it. You see, the way alcohol affects your sleep is even having a low amount of alcohol in a day could affect your sleep by up to 24%. And if you're drinking heavy, which is defined as over three drinks, you're disrupting your sleep by up to 40%. You see, alcohol is a central nervous system depressant, and it can cause your brain activity to slow down, leaving you feeling lethargic and often sleepy. Problem is, it really stops you from getting into that second cycle of sleep, into REM sleep, and it can really disrupt quality and duration. Now, we all know alcohol lowers our inhibitions, and this is especially true when it comes to snacking. When we're drinking, we're often in social settings where there's food out everywhere and we can really get into it. That can really throw us off on our weekly plan. Now these unplanned calories that you're taking in, paired with the carbohydrates and the alcohol you're drinking, these get stored. And they're often stored in the insulin sensitive areas. That is the fat deposits that are around your organs and weight. So when you hear about the beer belly, that's a very real thing. And next comes the hangover. You wake up with a pounding headache, dying for a glass of water, feeling lethargic, and often not wanting to do anything but just lay in bed. It is one of the common traps when it comes to drinking alcohol. And when you're on a weight loss journey, it's something that you need to avoid desperately. So if you know you're exercising the next day, I highly recommend you have a glass of water between each drink. Plus try to have an anti-inflammatory before bed, like an Advil. Now I know what you're thinking. Why do you want to live with so many rules? The reason you wanted to lose weight in the first place was to go look and feel your best when you're in social situations. Good, I want you to do so. But the way we're going to do so is setting ourselves up for success. And the best way we can achieve this is by fasting for the first portion of the day. Say you're going out on a Friday night. What I'm going to want you to do is fast until lunchtime, pushing those calories later into the day. And then when you do start eating, keep the food to primarily vegetables, fruits, and protein. Therefore, we're saving a lot of our carbohydrates for the night. What you're going to want to do is save those 700 calories for the nighttime so you can enjoy those drinks with friends. Because if we don't plan for things like this, then you just eat your normal calories throughout the week. And then come Friday night, you go out and drink 900 calories worth of alcohol and then grab a slice of pizza for 400 calories. 
and then you end up taking that weekly average of 16,800 calories and ballooning it well up over 18,000. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but that brings our daily caloric intake from 2,400 to almost 2,600. That's a lot. If you got anything from this video, give it a like. It helps to get it out there to other people who are looking to start their weight loss journey as well. We'll see you in the next one.